Hi, it's Patrick Hutzel from intensivecarehotline.com with another quick tip for families in intensive care. So we're getting a question from a reader who says, how long do patients need to be sedated and in an induced coma after they had a tracheostomy? Now, what a great question to ask. And to give you the short version of it, the goal of a tracheostomy should be to minimize sedation and the induced coma. That's exactly the goal of a tracheostomy. It's not the only goal, but it's one of the main goals of a tracheostomy to stop sedation and get patients out of an induced coma. So what opens happen what opens what often happens preceding a tracheostomy is that patients do not wake up after an induced coma or if they do wake up they are agitated they can't tolerate the breathing tube but by the same token they're not ready to be extubated and have the breathing tube removed as yet therefore the next step often is you know to do a tracheostomy so sedation can be stopped and people can come out come out of an induced coma in their own time what happens is when patients wake up with a breathing tube in their throat that can be very very uncomfortable very painful and uh, therefore they need to be resedated and once patients have a tracheostomy they can be woken up a tracheostomy doesn't cause a lot of pain it's very comfortable for most patients whilst it can be irritating and it can make patients cough it's nowhere near as uncomfortable as a breathing tube in the mouth now next steps then are once patients are out of an induced coma and have a tracheostomy they can be slowly sometimes even quickly moved uh, or weaned off the ventilator again that is the whole purpose of doing a tracheostomy now proceeding to that you know you should also check out some articles that and videos that we've done about how long can a breathing tube or an endotracheal tube stay in or how long should someone be on a ventilator before having a tracheostomy if you type those um, search terms into our website at intensivecarehotline.com you will get relevant videos and um, and blog posts about those topics that's my quick tip for today if you have a loved one in intensive care go to intensivecarehotline.com call us on one of the numbers on the top of the website or send us an email to support at intensivecarehotline.com check out our membership for families of critically ill patients in intensive care at intensivecaresupport.org. Like this video, comment below what you want to see next, Sub subscribe to my YouTube channel for updates for families in intensive care and click the notification bell for new videos. This is Patrick Hutzel from intensivecarehotline.com and I will talk to you in a few days.